Welcome back, Rimworldians. On this chapter of Harriet's survival, her encampment proceeds towards building a modern security system. It was extraordinarily uneventful throughout its early development. The gun turret research completed and the kill box was designed. We rejoin Pixie's dynasty at our expanding salon on the 3rd of September upon the completion of the security structure. Seven plasteel turrets were installed, leaving gaps from which the colonists could provide supporting fire. The range was cleared of trees that may provide attackers with cover and a serviceway stands behind the defenses. Harriet's plan is to eventually store weapons and armor in this area, but that's a potential project for another day. For now, Exec's latest research breakthrough was on moisture pumps. This will allow the colony to convert marshy soil into something more stable so that stone structures can be built unobstructed. The first instance of soil conversion is in the new kill box, where a hole in the wall needs to be straightened out. While the pump does its work, the old security corridor will be dismantled and converted into a simple bridge. In the late afternoon of September 4th, Harriet uses the tech print for circadian influence. It'd be a shame to lose this to some random catastrophe in the storage area if it just sat there doing nothing. Later that night, Mackie runs through a lightning storm to the south. What a daredevil. Oh The following day, the security bay is floored to prevent the growth of plants that would give attackers even the slightest of cover. Normally, wood is undesirable for its flammability, however in this case, if the floors were ignited it would cause heat and, potentially, burns to disrupt the progress of attackers. The ambrosia is temporarily left untouched. These tiles will be filled when the sprouts inevitably fade. As night falls, Cryon throws a tantrum and begins wrecking one of the water mills. Beaks rushes over to prevent catastrophic damage, but Cryon's rampage doesn't let up. Beaks tries to arrest Cryon, but Cryon is having none of it. Beaks drops his gun as he and Cryon exchange hits until Wheel comes in and blasts Cryon from the side, laying him out in the hay grass. Everyone rearms themselves as Slag the pacifist ferries Cryon to the med bay. And speaking of Slag, he will take on a greater medical role in the colony since he cannot fight. If he's never in combat, he's going to be the most likely survivor of any engagement, and therefore available to rescue effectively. At daybreak of September 6th, Beeks goes on a food binge due to his worn clothing. Meanwhile, quite the stockpile of ambrosia has been collected. The sooner this gets sold, the better. This is an addictive disaster waiting to happen. As the finishing touches are added to the security range, another tropical storm rumbles through the area. With the range complete, the backline is given flagstone. Soon the hay grass is collected, re-sown, and corn is added. As the end of the night approaches, so does the aerial drop of a mechanoid cluster. It consists of a bullet shield, two minor turrets, a reinforcement beacon, countdown and proximity activators, one mortar, 
one Inferno Cannon, and at least one Centipede, one Pikeman, and two Lancers. With an entire quadrant to spare, the colonists will study their approach carefully. Several hours later, a space refugee from the Iribarium crashes in the area as well. She's an older gal, but she's experienced. Giggity giggity, giggity goo, stick around. And her negative traits, neurotic and sickly, could create some interesting moments. If a royal tribute collector or slave trader passed by, she could always be sold. By that afternoon, the colony leader and her hubby load the mortars and begin shelling the mechanoid invaders. The first volley takes out a mini turret, as does the second, which also takes out an innocent bystander. As the third volley is launched, the mechs arrive at the newly constructed defenses. With only the Inferno Cannon and Mortar up, and only one colonist in a relatively decent mood, Beaks grabs a meal to up his mood, and heads out to finish this dilemma, once and for all. He circles around from the west to put the metal barrier between himself and the Inferno Cannon, so he can sneak into its short-range dead zone. As he triggers a mechanical implosion, he darts behind the wall for cover. The blast takes out the entire wall, but Beaks remains unharmed. He finishes off the mortar from a safe distance. And the threat is officially eliminated. By midday of the 9th, the spoils of war are retrieved, and the defenses are later repaired. The moisture pump also completes its process on the defensive line and is moved to a tile in the defensive serviceway. In the mid-morning of September 10th, 
an eclipse darkens the jungle as marble chunks are hauled into the range to slow enemies and force attackers to get closer under gunfire. That afternoon, Crunchy's pain puts him in a wandering daze through the rain. As hauling continues, a space chunk nearly lands on top of Adventura. Lions promptly salvages the near-fatal wreckage. Brian also has a bit of a breakdown as he decides to binge on the Ambrosia, precisely what Harriet was worried about. Harriet considers the possibility of ignoring all future substance acquisition with such a temperamental crowd. It may be time for her to select a specialized economy that includes items that cannot be abused, such as medicine or food crops. Just before the end of the night, a war merchant caravan from the Aban Bevexa Union approaches. Wheel greets his guests and exchanges the Ambrosia and a recurved bow for 1,034 silver. The Kiliath Mech Hive is not done yet. Another strike force lands to the southeast. This group lands two scythers one lancer, and a centipede next to two charge turrets and two mini turrets under the protection of a high shield. Mortars will not be able to clear the way on this occasion. With no urgency on this attack, not even an activation timer for that matter, the colonists will not rush themselves. I will leave you all on this little cliffhanger. On the following chapter, Harriet and her squad will take care of these troublesome machines. As always, thank you for your attention, friends. Also, a little announcement. As many of you have heard, I've made a Subscribestar account if you wish to support this project and have access to the naming rights in the next series. The link is in the video description. Thanks again, guys and gals. I hope you are all safe, healthy, and fulfilled. I will see you on the next one.